Learning new languages opens new doors. When you grow up in the UK, it's not that common to learn a new language. Now imagine you're so passionate about experiencing other cultures that you not only get citizenship in another country, but you actually get a tattoo to prove it. <laughs> Those are the people behind Babbel, a pioneer in online language learning. They make it possible for people around the world to expand their horizons and really connect to another culture. David really lives this. And if you ask him nicely, maybe he will show you the tattoo. <laughs> He's senior programmatic manager at Babbel. Because even if you have an amazing product, you still need to make sure that you get it in front of people that might use it. <coughs> in order to do that, he enlisted the help of Maggie. She's director of Sales North at Outbrain, a, a native advertising platform from Israel. Now, she would never call herself a sales manager. She says, I just like to make companies successful. For Babel, she's doing exactly that. Together, they will present their success case, how Outbrain helped Bubble with native discovery to scale their customer base on a global level. Please welcome both on stage, Maggie and David. Hello. That was a very nice introduction. Uh, I do have a Berlin Bear tattoo on my arm. I actually got it done before my citizenship was um, actually successfully through. So I took the gamble and, <laughs> and it actually paid off. So that's very good. So we're going to talk to you today about how Babel and Outbrain have worked together for now more than four and a half years and go through some of our kind of key campaigns that we've done together and how we've I think, both profited from them. So first off, to start quickly with what it actually is Babel. So most of you probably know Babel, but it is as Christian said, a language learning app, and our mission is to get everyone learning languages. We believe anyone can learn a language. If you're old, young, if you're a single mum from Kreuzberg, or if you're a teenager from Hamburg, doesn't matter. We think anyone can learn a language, but ideally with Babbel. We have up to 120,000 downloads per day globally with our app. You can learn up to 14 languages now with Babbel, and we have millions of active paying subscribers, uh, subscribers all around the world. 600 people in Berlin and New York. What's super cool for us is that we have people from over 50 nations working for us, which is very, very handy if you're a language learning company. But more specifically, what does content marketing look like at Babbel? So native discovery, content marketing are two terms which you'll hear quite a lot. So one part of the team is what we call Team Magazine. These are the editors who are responsible for creating all of our content in our main content platform, which is the Babbel Magazine. The Babbel Magazine is a kind of one-stop shop for articles on kind of language learning, on tips and tricks for how to learn languages. Um, it can go very granular into you know, accents and dialects you know, within languages. And it's the editors who are responsible for actually making that content all in-house. We launched it in English and German about four years ago. Now we've up to seven languages. When we made the magazine, we thought, all right, we need this magazine because we want to have content to run in our campaigns on Outbrain, for example. But it quickly grew into a multi-channel tool in the sense that we are able to use the articles on the magazine. We use them on you know, Facebook campaigns, on Instagram. The magazine has become a very, very strong SEO tool as well over the years in that it brings us a lot of org organic traffic to Babbel. Um, it's a great way to kind of show off our our brand niche and that we are authoritative language learning nerds. We are really, really nerdy about languages mm -hmm. and the magazine is the best place for us to kind of show off those skills. That's where you get all this, you know, deep level, like nerdy, in-depth diving into language learning and into languages and the magazine is the best place for us to actually show that. It's not just articles. Um, we have you know, everything from videos and so forth. We have actual podcast episodes that we've made ourselves, also hosted on the magazine as well. So we're serving up this content in a variety of formats. But it is a direct marketing tool, of course. Mm -hmm. So on the magazine, there are plenty of conversion elements to get new users purchasing Babbel. Once the magazine was in place, it then became the job of what we call Team Discovery, which is the other half of the content marketing team, to actually therefore advertise that content through campaigns 
on Outbrain, for example. And so it is that part of the team who are responsible for all of these adverts that you've probably seen around the internet. If you've seen anything about learning Spanish in three weeks and so forth, that's probably my fault, so I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, and you can see where we advertise there. But I want to dive into a little kind of a little bit deeper into some of the questions that Babel actually asked itself when we started working with Outbrain. You know, why would it make sense to go down this native discovery route? So why native discovery? We were very impressed with the kind of websites that networks such as Outbrain were partnered up. Um, we they are working with people like Spiegel, BBC News, The Guardian. These are high quality websites with a very high quality audience that works well for us. It's a kind of older demographic, a more educated demographic, who have a, who actually have a disposable income and are willing to actually purchase a subscription service. So it was the right audience for us, and that was very easy. Um, these networks gave us the chance to really scale globally. So we run campaigns in everywhere from like LATAM to Europe to North America. We're able to really have these global reach in our campaigns very easily. What really, really pleased us was the high degree of control. So if there are any CMOs in the room who are you know, worried about how their marketing dollars are being spent, you'll like the fact that with networks like Outbrain, you can track every single dollar that is spent. Right? If there's a campaign that's working well, you shift your budget very, very easily over to that campaign, and you pause one that perhaps is not working so, so well. So that high degree of control was very important for actually proving that concept and allowing us to scale up responsibly and not waste money, essentially. And when we launch these campaigns, we have very, very quick feedback through the networks in terms of traffic and you know, conversions and so forth for what type of content is working well then we can optimize, we can duplicate, and then we can you know, launch more successful campaigns. Why do we go for a content approach in our campaigns? So why don't we just have you know, traditional display adverts that have lots of landing pages on that you know, say, buy, 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 special offer now? We go for the content approach of using magazine articles that tell a story, because within a story, you can take the time to actually convince someone about your product and what you can inspire them to actually purchase it and you know, learn a language. Um, we see, on average, a doubling of the lead to sale when we go for the content story-based approach of the magazine articles compared to what we would call a traditional kind of static landing page. The magazine has also allowed us to kind of have brand uplift, particularly in countries where we don't do you know, traditional or we don't do widespread marketing activity. So let's say TV advertising. We don't do TV advertising in every country around the world, but our magazine is present in almost every country around the world. So there are many places that where the magazine is the first touch point for them to actually understand what Babbel is. They see our values, they see the people behind the product, and they read our, and actually read our content. Yeah, video, audio, going through that before, is, it's so much easier to have the multimedia being served up on a magazine than it is on a static landing page. And as we saw right from the start, when we invested into the magazine and we took the time to have these in-depth articles to really create this long read content, this multimedia content, we started seeing this really strong spillover effect into SEO. The Babel magazine was not intended to be a huge driver of organic traffic, but it has become that in the four years that it has now been online. More than 50% of the organic traffic that comes to Babel.com comes through the magazine. So it's a huge SEO tool for us as well. How do you find the right audience of native discovery? Well, it's a bit of a cheeky answer, but in general, they find you, right? The audience that we want to talk to is already present on, on the native discovery networks. However, you can obviously get more seg segmented in who you want to talk to. So we make use of interest targeting to talk to people who are interested in travel. We talk to them with you know, travel-themed advertising, travel-themed content. And of course, that alignment of message across all of the touch points is great for boosting conversions. Retargeting, lookalike campaigns, all of these further segmentation options that are available to you on Outbrain are a great way of you know, increasing your clicks and increasing your click to lead. Let's have a look at some of the content that we've actually launched um, on Outbrain over the years we've been working with them and how Outbrain actually helped us to drive some of that success. So if a week is a long time in politics, then four and a half years is a very long time in marketing. 
but our first campaign that we launched with Outframe was now in April 2014, so quite a long time ago, and it focused on one of the resident polyglots that we had working at Babel. Now, I know not every company has polyglots working at their company, but we did have one, and uh, Matthew, he speaks more than 20 languages, only nine of them fluently, I mean, I say only nine of them fluently. <laughs> I can barely do two. But um, we thought, this is a pretty inspirational guy. Why don't we just film him you know, talking those nine, la those nine languages, put him up on YouTube, and see if that content works? We started getting views straight away. It was kind of going viral. And we thought, OK, that content is working. I wonder what it would do if we put it in an article in which Matthew shared his personal tips and tricks for learning languages. And that combination of article and video became the first Outbrain campaign. Our key learning was that constant optimization drives success. It would be nice if you could just launch a campaign, sit back and count the money as it comes in. But no, you always need to be tweaking things. And even a minor tweak will actually kind of bring you great success. So we saw that of the Outbrain ads that we launched, the ones that had the highest CTR were the ones that said 10 tips and tricks to learn any language. And the article had been called 10 Tips and Tricks to Learn A Language. That slight change in wording was driving conversions in terms of clicks. So we thought, OK, let's change the actual title of the original article as well to any language. And the result was a 50% increase in click to lead. Two years later, we went forward and we thought, OK, polyglots are cool, but polyglots are not our customer base. We're talking to people who either cannot learn languages or have a lot of difficulties learning lang uh, languages. So we wanted to show what would happen if normal people attempted the impossible with Babbel. We got 15 Babbel employees to learn Spanish in three weeks, only using uh, the Babbel app. We filmed them, we followed their journey, turned it into a video, and then we made an article alongside it that talked about Babbel, talked about their story, and gave some USPs of the product and some data to actually substantiate some of the claims. That article was how our app gets you speaking Spanish in three weeks. And what Outbrain did to help us was that it kind of turned into our first real global hit. Even though the article was about learning Spanish, it worked everywhere in the world that we ran it. It even worked in Spanish-speaking countries. Because the point wasn't, oh, they're learning Spanish. It was, this is a language learning app, and it's helped normal people learn a language in general. That was the real crucial point there. Um, it became a piece of evergreen content in the sense that any time Outbrain added a new you know, website to their network, we had a new audience that was then seeing this content. And we made use of interest targeting as well in the last um, six months or so to make sure to see that anyone who was interested in travel, perhaps, if they're interested in travel, we also showed this content to them because, let's be honest, British people, when they travel, they're going to Spain, right? So <laughs> it works very well in the UK because of that. Um, yeah, this year, so our most recent kind of big campaign was we thought, all right, let's take a more kind of nuanced approach to the kind of story that we're telling. And we actually used brand research to inform our content development process. Our brand research had been telling us time and time again, when people think of Babbel, they think you are a quality app, a premium app, and that you're made by kind of experts. They know that it's a kind of an expert made app. But what we had not done in our content was actually show those experts who are behind the app. So what we did was we had an interview with one of our kind of di didactics um, experts on the team who was responsible for making the courses. And we interviewed her and said, you know, how does Babbel work? How do you make the, the actual courses? And is it possible to build kind of a daily habit of language learning with the app? And the title was How to Learn a Language in 20 Minutes Per Day. What we really kind of learned from that piece of content, actually we kind of utilized our previous experience with Outbrain because we knew that short kind of snappy claims that are inspirational but achievable work best on the network. So how to learn a language in 20 minutes a, a day, it sounds like one of those, you know, lose weight quickly kind of claims, but we were backing it up with an 800, 900 word article which was an interview with an expert full of you know, data points and USPs and so forth to put, to, well, to put our money where our mouth was. And that really worked. Um, the unification of the messaging was also really, really important for us as well. The Outbrain adverts with the highest conversions were the one that used the same title and the image that was present in the article. So simply just 
making sure that all of your touch points are saying the same thing and are maybe you know, displaying the same images was a real important way to drive performance. And the last learning we had was that we needed to be smart in the approach of which device we were targeting with this content. Now, in previous campaigns, we had used a lot of video, but as you can imagine, if you're reading one of our articles and maybe you're on the you're on the Urban and you're going you're, you're going to work, you're not going to watch a 10-minute YouTube video on the Urban. You're not going to use your mobile data to watch that video. So people with mobile devices were just bouncing off of our content. But this article had no video in. So it performed better on mobile, it performed better on tablet because people were able to read it, consume it, and they weren't being overwhelmed with a really long video. So just to, just to recap, AppBrain has helped us by giving us a global scale with our content marketing efforts. New publishers are coming all the time and that means new audiences all of the time. Interest targeting, lookalike targeting, retargeting, it's all there. High degree of control over our campaigns and we're having the, one of the best benefits is that as we drive more traffic to the magazine with our paid campaigns, the magazine also benefits organically and we're winning twice really because we're getting all of this free SEO traffic as well. So I'm going to pass over to Maggie now to talk to you to more about Outbrain and some of their products and how they might be of use to you and your company. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, David. It's such an honor. Babel was actually my very, very first uh, partner that I started working with five years ago now since I've been at Outbrain. So I'm very close to my heart as well. And I'm glad that I was able to grow their company for them. Um, so let's just make sure we're all on the same page here in terms of what is Outbrain. Just by a raise of hands, how many of you guys know what Outbrain is and what we do? Shit, that's a lot of you. <laughs> wow, if I would have asked that question two years ago, that would have been way less than half. So um, I'll still show you guys what it looks like and what we do, um, because there have been a few changes. Oh, I guess the slide kind of uh, got broken. Um, that's OK. So yeah, this is what uh, is called the Outbrain Smart Feed Experience. And this is really revolutionizing the way that native discovery works and the way that we consume native advertising. So you'll see here the user is on a publisher site, and you scroll down. And you have an infinite scroll. So very similar to uh, Facebook, to the Instagram experience. You can also swipe right, you can swipe left. So you really have um, an extremely high engagement here from the user and um, they can basically scroll through the publisher site um, all day until they find ads that they like, uh, content that they like, they can click. Um, and it's a mixture of um, ads as well as publisher branded content. So we have a lot of performance tools. We have a huge, huge uh, portfolio of performance tools, targeting possibilities, um, everything that any modern um, performance marketer needs. I think some of the most important ones or interesting ones where people might not think that uh, we have this is uh, something like lookalike audiences, so extremely similar to what you do on Facebook every single day. And Outbrain is actually the very first native partner to have developed this feature. Um, we also have something really interesting, which is interest targeting. Uh, David mentioned this earlier, so we haven't had this that long either. And again, it's really just another level of targeting of granularity where you can say, I want to have specific audiences that want to um, look at travel content or lifestyle, whatever um, you are looking for. And um, in terms of the, uh, the app portfolio or for app campaigns, we're able to use server-to-server -server integration. So we're partnered up with Adjust, AppsFlyer, Tune, Kachava, the list goes on um, for all your needs. And that means actually in the Outbrain dashboard, let's just go right there. In the Outbrain dashboard here, what you see, you'll be able to track all of your KPIs, the entire customer journey in one uh, modern interface. So we're extremely transparent. We really believe in enabling the marketer and giving them all the control that they deserve. We have nothing to hide. We have no sneaky publishers to hide, no bad quality. Um, and so here you really are able to see all of the different targeting possibilities you have in the dashboard. Um, and what I think is really nice that we don't, this dashboard is available for all customers, no matter how small or large. Even if you're a very, very small business, you're just starting up with a couple hundred dollars, 
sign up, get your campaign set up. Um, you, can, you have the full flexibility of, of all the tools. The next couple of slides are gonna be really diving very deep into some use cases. I really wanted to give everybody in the audience a chance to take something home with them or back to the office. So there's four use cases that are here. The first one is um, sales. So what do you need? What do you need to do if you wanna get sales? This is an example from Outfittery. Um, this is a mobile example and you'll see here, is there a pointer here? No. So you can see here actually that on the right hand side, this is what we call the first look. And the first look is extremely important. Um, so the user can right away when he goes onto the landing page, he has a call to action button and he has very little text. You don't want to overpower him with all the text and information. You really want to make sure that um, he knows where to convert. And with if you're, ha if you're a client that wants to get sales, so actually lower funnel, um, lower funnel goals as well, then good things that you can use are custom audiences. So you can actually retarget users within the Outbrain universe. You can exclude users. For example, you can say, hey, I only want to have people that have been on my website the last 30 days but didn't convert. Or people that now have the free trial, I want to get them a special offer to actually sign up and buy the product. Um, and also lookalike audiences works um, very well for lower funnel conversions. What if you guys need leads? I'm sure many of you guys need leads. Um, this is an example from Koifa Portal. It's a Berlin-based company as well. They do leads for all kinds of different products. This is the desktop page. Um, and you can see here, it's a very, very simple funnel. So it starts off with a question. Which, um, which house are you looking to sell? And then the user goes through four stages, has to give his email address, and then upon which he gets the results for his, for his house. With uh, content like this or for leads, I really recommend to use dynamic headlines. So we can also say in the headline, people in city are going crazy about this app. People in city are buying or selling their homes. So um, you have a really, really good level of of targeting, and speaking of targeting, zip code targeting is also a big one. So especially for products like this, when you want to get users only in a specific area, um, zip code targeting is also possible. Second to last, the install. So this is actually the app Edagio. I don't know who, how, who was here this morning in the session when Christoph Lange spoke. But yeah, they're also working with us for, uh, for quite some time. And we're actually in this case where it's just about the install going directly to the app store. So as you know, David mentioned, all, everything about his magazine, the SEO, the SEO spillover, and the uplift, that's absolutely extremely important. However, there are certain apps or certain users where you link them directly to the app store that they're going to have a much better cost per install. Um, and so again, with that, you know, we'll really look on iOS versus Android. Um, funny enough, iOS tends to be cheaper on Outbrain. So I know a lot of you guys have the different experience on Facebook. Um, where Android is cheaper, so if you're looking for cheap but high quality iOS users, that would be um, a really good one. And last but not least, the subscription. The subscription model, I think, has grown exponentially over the last two years, at least in my portfolio. And here we have also someone that's very dear to me, the Blinkist, um, the Blinkist app or the Blinkist magazine. Extremely similar also to what Babel is doing, um, I think, in that case. So, you know, you first need to get the buy-in, need to get the trust, because, I mean, you know, Blinkist, it's quite, it's a little bit of a pricier app, I would say. And so people have to understand, okay, why would I give you money out of my pocket for, to subscribe to another app? I have the Babbel app, I have Adagio app, I have Blinkist. So um, that's, in this case, extremely important when you're talking about subscriptions. Make sure you have a solid content landing page to then seal the deal, close the deal on, um, on, in the App Store. And finally, I want to give you some of my personal five tips that I always tell all my partners um, for you to take home, take a picture of this, hang it on your desk, on your wall, um, and feel free to use them. So, um, number one, one landing page is enough. So I get so many people that I talk, oh, thank you. Um, not, not thank you. <laughs> uh, there we go. 
Yeah, so one landing page is enough. So if you come to me and you say, hey, I get what Babel has done, I get what Blinkist is doing, and all these guys, but you know what? We don't have any manpower for this. Well, you know what? When I started with Babel 2014, they had nothing. They had a couple of people in a, in a little small office, and they managed to do it as well. Just whip yourself up a WordPress site and get the thing going. It's not that hard. I'll write you something. <laughs> it's very that simple. Um, and then if you have that one landing page, you know what? You can create different audience themes. So, for example, you can have one generic landing page and then target it to different users, like single moms. This is how single moms are using this app to become smarter. This is how busy businessmen are using this app to lose weight. This is how over 50-year-olds are learning a language. It's all the same product. It's all the same thing. But you're just targeting it to different audiences in your campaigns. The third one is um, a really big one. I mean, just here in Berlin and so many expats as well, using actually English speaking content targeted to users in Germany. So really being conscious of the fact that there's so many people living here or living in Germany reading CNN, The Guardian, all of our publisher sites. So you can target expats, English speaking in Germany, in France, all around the world. The fourth one is, I think we had this earlier in the panel discussion, the podcast, you have to test and take time to optimize. That's really important. So if you don't have 30 minutes a day for this channel, then it's not gonna work. So it's really something that you need to give TLC, tender loving care, and then you'll be very impressed with the amount of revenue that you'll generate. And last but not least, remember I pointed out at the outfittery example, the five second rule. Once somebody clicks on your ad, you have maybe five seconds, if you're lucky, to convince him. After that, he's out. So if you mislead him in the headline, if it's clickbait, if it's just trash, <laughs> then you might as well waste your money elsewhere. So keep that in mind, and the first look is decisive. Thank you, guys. You want to take a question? Yeah. Are there any questions? We Do have we? time for one or two Ooh, questions. We have time. So I would have a question Ooh, on something yeah. that you mentioned in the talk. Sure. Um, you talked about this, you, that you changed it from learning a language to learning any language, and then CTR skyrocketed. So that brings me to the question if, like, how much time do you invest actually to tweak and A-B test the content versus choosing the channel? Because it seems to have such a vast amount of, of effect on your conversion rate, actually. Yeah. It's all trial and error, but we are testing teasers and changing teasers almost every day. So yes, we have the content first, and that stays largely static. But we are making our learnings and testing on the networks and seeing what works there very, very quickly. Yeah. And then we are able to very, very quickly bring it back in. But that's a daily optimization and testing. I see. And it probably requires a lot of manpower to do that? It does not require a lot of manpower, really. Um, we are only two or three people actually doing the um, like campaign management every single day. Actually, now four, sorry. So we're able to then share but in, the, in the team. What works very quickly can then be shared very quickly as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank All right, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much.